Greetings and welcome to another edition of Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that beautiful hymn, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Listen to these words of Scripture. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joy fully, the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and the music of cymbals and harps and lyres. And the singers also were to bring together from the region around Jerusalem, from villages for the singers who had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, they purified the people and the gates and the wall. I had leaders of Judah go up to the top of the wall. I also assigned two large choirs to give thanks. One was to proceed on top of the wall to the right toward the dung gate, and the second choir proceeded on the opposite direction. I followed them up of the wall, together with half of the people and the two choirs that gave thanks and took their places in the house of God. And so did I, together with half the officials, as well as the priests. And the choir sang under the direction of Jeraziah. And on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. And the women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. Nehemiah. So, so who is this Nehemiah whose memoirs constitute the 16th book of the Old Testament? So why is what he wrote something for us to consider during the Advent season? Well, first of all, Nehemiah was not a prophet like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, and Zechariah, though their names sound similar, the Nehemiah was not a prophet. No, he was a politician. Hmm. First, he held a position of high honor in the court of the Persian king in the 5th century before Christ. And actually, he was a butler to the king, sort of, sort of like a bodyguard. He was a Jew, and he mourned when he learned of the distressing conditions of his ancestral country and Jerusalem following the Babylonian captivity. The news that Nehemiah received evidently informed him of the Jews' unsuccessful attempts to rebuild Jerusalem's city walls in 458 B.C., Scholars say it was an ominous development, for there were hostile neighbors around Jerusalem who could now assume that Jerusalem was still in ruins, disarmed on its own. So Nehemiah positioned um, the kind for permission to return to Jerusalem in order to help restore the city. And, well, the king, he was kind and granted him a limited leave of absence and sent him back to Judah as a governor. Now, because of the opposition of some of Jews' neighbors, the king sent a military escort to accompany Nehemiah to Jerusalem. The rebuilding of the temple and the reforms made during his administration are recorded in the book of Nehemiah. Now, much of is written in the first person, and it might therefore be considered like the memoirs of the governor of Judah 
the emissary of the king of Persia. Now, the very first thing this governor did was to rebuild an important part of the infrastructure of Jerusalem, the wall. Infrastructure, an underlying or foundation, especially for an organization or system. This term has been used since 1927 to refer collectively to roads, bridges, rail lines, similar public works that, uh, that are required for an industrial economy to function. We're concerned about that these days, aren't we? The term also has had specific application to the permanent military installations necessary for the defense of a country. And so it was for Nehemiah. That wall needed to be rebuilt. And through his leadership, the city wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt in 52 days. And that without modern technology. And so, Scripture tells us the people of Judah rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. Now, we know already that those hostile nations surrounding Jerusalem were not pleased with this accomplishment. They probably considered it a provocative act. But why was that wall really rebuilt? It was rebuilt to secure the safety of the temple. Yes, to secure the safety of the temple. Now, Nehemiah accomplished many other things as governor of Judah. He's a model for leadership. He established a reasonable and attainable goal. He had a sense of mission. He was willing to get involved. He rearranged his priorities in order to accomplish his goal. He patiently waited for God's timing. He showed respect to his superior. He prayed at crucial times. He made his request with tact and graciousness. He was well prepared and thought of his need, his needs in advance. And he went through proper channels. He took time several days to rest, pray, and plan. And he investigated the situation firsthand. He informed others only after he knew the size of the problem. He identified himself as one of the people. He set before them a reasonable and attainable goal. And he assured them God was in the project. And he displayed confidence in facing obstacles. He displayed God's confidence in facing those obstacles. He was not discouraged by opposition. No, he courageously used the authority of his position. Now, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Now, I think we can safely say that we all know of leaders like that in history of this country who had many, if not all, of these qualities, and we thank God for them. Nehemiah, was beloved of the people of Judah because of his accomplishments, but not just that, because of his character. And his first priority was to rebuild that wall to protect the temple. He succeeded in just 52 days, and the people rejoiced. It was really a spiritual wall, this wall around Jerusalem. So what is our spiritual city wall today? What kind of spiritual infrastructure protects our faith? What is the infrastructure that secures our faith in Jesus Christ? What surrounds the church, the living church? And says, if you destroy this wall, if you reach, breach this wall, you do so at your eternal peril because you destroy, you breach what has been ordained by God through his word. His word. The scripture, that is what protects the faith. That is the spiritual infrastructure 
the very foundation of our faith, the living word of God. Those who challenge it, those who diminish it, those who trivialize it, those who abuse it, do so at their eternal peril. This is no small matter in the life of the church. This is no small matter in our personal lives. If we would protect the temple, if we would protect the faith, we must rebuild our faith on the foundation of his holy word. Now, that's not to say we cannot study the word, that we cannot discuss the word, that we cannot be troubled by the word, that we cannot question what God means in his word. We should do those things. Reason is an important tool of the Christian. But as John Wesley affirmed, reason must always be subject to Scripture. When we can't figure it out, we need to check it out and trust the Word of God. If God's Word is not the blueprint for our salvation, if God's Word is not the foundation upon which we build our faith, if God's Word is not the defender of the faith, then we are at peril. And so, during this Advent season, like the people of Jerusalem, we celebrate, we rejoice, we give thanks, and our voices are heard around the world. God's word has been fulfilled. God's son has been born. God has laid the foundation of our faith. Celebrate it. Rejoice in it. Give thanks in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you and God bless you. Amen.